air monitoring in PM2.5. Just what is air sampling? Air sampling is any method used to take a representative volume of air and analyze its particulate, chemical, or radioactive contamination. That representative volume of air can then be used to calculate a contamination per volume unit concentration and can be compared to various guidelines and standards. Air sampling and monitoring is how we quantify air contamination. Why do we perform air sampling and monitoring? It's done for the identification and analysis of air pollution sources, for monitoring manufacturing and power plants for their environmental impact, for monitoring working environments for hazardous airborne substances and particulates, to investigate product and vehicular emissions, and often to comply with government regulations concerning all of the above. What then are airborne particulates? Airborne particulates are microscopic or nanoscopic particle matter suspended in the air or atmosphere. These can be either volatile, non-volatile, semi-volatile, liquid, or solid. Airborne particulates, especially those categorized as PM2.5, are broadly designated by the IARC and WHO as a Group 1 carcinogen and are effectively the most hazardous form of air pollution. So how small are PM2.5 particulates? PM2.5 is defined by the EPA as fine particulate matter with diameters less than or equal to 2.5 micrometers, which can only be seen with an electron microscope. PM2.5 is emitted from construction sites, smokestacks, fires, power plants, industries, and vehicles. Associated health hazards increase as particle size decreases due to permeability of small particles. From the lungs, they are able to enter the bloodstream causing asthma, respiratory disease, heart disease, genetic mutations, low birth weight, and death. New air quality standards are being implemented across the globe to monitor and control for PM2.5. By and large, the EPA, NIOSH, OSHA, and ASTM are driving this analysis. Here is an overview of a variety of particle sizes commonly monitored. Larger particles, such as pollen and some textile fibers, are visible to the naked eye. PM2.5 particles are subvisible. Certain air pollutants occur more frequently indoors than outdoors, and vice versa. Indoor air pollution levels may actually be greater than outdoor pollution levels and pose a greater risk to personal safety. Indoor air pollutants can include household products, smoke, pet dander, microbes, construction byproducts, formaldehyde, and radon. Outdoor air pollution is more likely to contain particulates as well as molecular contaminants like nitrogen oxides and ozone. The U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, and other organizations have issued exposure limits for more than 600 chemical contaminants that specify a time-weighted average, or TWA, concentration. The TWA contaminant concentration shall not be exceeded in any worker's personal breathing zone. Industrial contaminants can exist in such diverse workplaces as mines and quarries, pharmaceuticals, medical facilities, and construction or demolition sites. The EPA has identified 187 air pollutants as well as six criteria air pollutants, which include particulate matter. These pollutants are governed by two Clean Air Act standards. Primary standards address public health protection, including protecting the health of sensitive populations such as asthmatics, children, and the elderly. Secondary standards provide public welfare and environmental protections, including protection for animals, crops, vegetation, and buildings. The six criteria pollutants originate from a variety of sources and are implicated in a number of very serious health conditions. Metals processing and smelting, the burning of fossil fuels, and motor vehicles exhaust produce the highest contributions to priority pollutants. Exposure can result in irreversible damage to respiratory, reproductive, neurological, and cardiovascular systems. In fact, countries in all global regions are increasing and strengthening their air quality regulatory requirements for a wide variety of contaminants and hazards. 
New, stricter standards are continually being implemented and enforced for particulate matter and other pollutants, and especially for PM2.5. In the U.S., the EPA, NIOSH, OSHA, and ASTM are responsible for developing new methods and increasing regulations and standards as necessary. Many other countries also refer to U.S. methods for analysis guidelines. This table further outlines the top six pollutants and their testing criteria. It denotes their primary secondary status, the collection averaging time, the upper limit for permitted levels, and the testing concentration maximum. Here, you can see the typical air sample workflow for a variety of different analytical techniques. Samples are collected on a filter or resin by vacuum, prepared by desiccation, filter clearing, extraction, or filter ashing, and analyzed via gravimetric techniques, microscopy, or instrumentation. The regulations governing PM2.5 are similar between countries and regions with some minor differences in limits and materials. The table shown here details each region's regulatory governing body, the enforced standard with its annual limits, and filter specifications for sample collection. The most effective detection methods for each of the top six pollutants can be seen below. Sulfur oxide is best measured using ultraviolet fluorescence on ambient air samples and pararosanilene methods for conventional samples. Carbon monoxide can be detected using non-dispersive infrared photometry. Total suspended particles can be quantified via gravimetric measurements, lead through ICP-MS, ozone via chemiluminescence, and nitrogen oxides via gas-based chemiluminescence. In conclusion, air monitoring is performed to determine the concentration of contaminants and or particles in air. PM2.5 is the category of air particles smaller than 2.5 microns that pose the greatest health risk. Global regulations on PM2.5 particulates and other airborne contamination is on the rise. Air monitoring and sampling is necessary to comply with these regulations. The steps of PM2.5 air analysis consist of sample collection, sample preparation, and sample analysis.